Welcome to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis V. Wolf and Sandy Renner. I am Alexis V. Wolf of the Fiery Sword Global Ministries. And you can reach me at www.thefiresword.com. I'm Sandy Renner, and you can reach my webpage at sandyrenner.net. And we are Better Together. together. And we are back in uh, Sunday 2 of 2023. Yes. 2023. We're, we hit the ground running last Sunday and just kind of gave an introduction of welcome back and welcome to the new year. And again, we are going to go through a lot of our books. We are both published authors. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you. And welcome to 2023 and Better Together. That's right. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this at whatever time you're listening to it. Uh, we are certainly grateful. We just want to bring the living word to everyday life so that we can help one another grow. So that we yes. can grow together and be nourished together. So that we can face these hard times together. So today we are going to talk out of my newest book. It just came out, I don't know, December 20. 22 um, on grief. Weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Yeah, just a few weeks ago. Uh, and so this is a little tiny book. I have a whole series of small books and they're meant to be quick reads, a quick overview of certain topics that like we just want to hear about that topic. So this right. one is called Beyond Grief. Mm. And so as Sandy and I get together and we talk about okay, what, what are we going dis to discuss and we see Holy Spirit, you know, we have really come through, Sandy, an awful lot of grief, an Absolutely. awful lot of trauma and um, I hate to say drama, but between COVID drama, and, drama and <laughs> all everything the, in between. Yeah. And we've just had so many deaths. You said you were just reading an article. Tell them about that article. I, I was, well, I was just listening to a, a kind of a podcast this morning, and this expert, and I don't remember his name, uh, he was talking about how he has been studying the increase of deaths, mm -hmm. and that deaths were a thousand people up from the highest average per week. Just in America. Just in America. Yeah. And so I, I can say from personal experience as well as Alexis, I have had more deaths in, yes. within the scope of people I know well. I'm not talking about people, you know, James second cousin twice removed people's from people. my mama's side, you know. <laughs> yeah. The people that I know that I've had some level of relationship with, yes. it's literally been in the hundreds over the past two years. And it's just increasing. It's shocking. Uh, and even beyond death, there, there's so much. Alexis and I were with a group of women yesterday and, and, and uh, helping mentor yeah. them. And one young woman told us, because we were talking about this subject grief, mm -hmm. and one woman, and we've been men mentoring this girl for <coughs> several weeks, and it came out yesterday Months, actually. Yeah. that she on her 16th birthday, which she's probably in her late 30s, mm -hmm. late 30s, early 40s, yeah. maybe, uh, when she was 16 years old, the day of her birthday, 16th birthday, her father killed himself. And she found him on her 16th birthday. Seven years later, she walks in at age 23 and finds her mother had committed suicide as well. She lost both her parents to suicide. Which is that's just almost too hard to even wrap our How heads do you around. That? Uh, year before last, I have four very close friends, and all four of they, these people are not really connected. All four of their mothers died within several months of each other. Okay, so they were older and, you know, <laughs> aged and had some health issues. But when you start seeing this numbers just rolling in, uh, you have to stop and say, okay, people are getting bombarded yes. on every side with grief. Mm -hmm. We've got to be, we've got to be ready and able to help them face that grief, because in the middle of grief is often where we lose our hope. Yes, we lose our mind sometimes. Mm -hmm. We lose our faith in God. We lose our faith in everything that that has been stable sure. for us. And, and sometimes people don't find it again. So we really had to get for the Lord, and she wrote this little book, and uh, it's, it's actually a very good little book. I read through it, and it explains grief. And we both come to the understanding that grief is not just about death, although that is the first thing we, mm -hmm. we kind of um, go to when we hear the word. But people could grieve a lot of things. We could grieve a divorce, a lost marriage. We could grieve... We can grieve 
uh, loss of jobs, yeah. of careers, of, and I think we really started experiencing this in such a depth that we had never, during the COVID, couple, those two to three COVID years we've experienced, um, we, we lost so much, we lost a lot of our freedoms. We lost, yeah, so people lost jobs because they didn't adhere to certain criteria. And we're, we're grieving those things yeah. still. And you know what? Grief is necessary. I, I said this to the group yesterday. Grief is actually a gift from God. Now I know that sounds just a little strange, but it is. It's actually a gift because we must properly grieve. Grief is, grief is good. It doesn't feel good. It's meant to be good. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. It's not a happy place. And I'm not implying that you, you could be happy in the middle of that. But I am saying that if you do the process correctly, it will bring inner healing. Mm. You will not forget your loved one or, or the thing that's lost, but you will be able to handle the stress and the pain of that more efficiently mm -hmm. to work in your favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wrote in chapter one, it's called Defining Grief. Grief, is, its definition is deep sorrow, especially that caused by someone's death. And again, yeah. anything can be a death Yes. Whether it's literal or metaphoric, so true. Um, and I, so I wrote all these <clears throat> these synonyms because I found that very very interesting. The synonyms are sorrow, misery, sadness, anguish, pain, distress, agony, torment, and there's about twenty more. Yeah. So, so many people might say, "Well, I don't know that I'm still grieving," but then we start saying, "Do you feel such a sadness?" Right. Well, yeah, I do. So we may not identify with that particular word in a particular moment, but some of these other ones yeah. will trigger. And what I noted in here is that when I looked up the antonym to grief, the only word that came up One word. is joy. Joy. And the only way to come into that joy, and listen, Sandy and I, we're, we're heavy hitters. Now, we don't, yeah, we we don't mess around. We don't, we don't, we don't do band-aid surgery. Or tiptoe around <laughs> things. Because the truth is the truth. And the the... What, what does it say? The fastest path to get to where you're going is a straight path. So we're yes. about the straight path. We're not yes. trying to zigzag and go, well, let me let me appease your feelings and this kind of stuff. It's not that your feelings don't matter, but joy. And the only way to really walk in joy is Christ because Christ is our joy. He is our joy. And so all of these things, whatever the root of your grief, Christ is the only answer. And people don't want to hear that because... Make it, listen, we're not knocking anybody. We've all been there, done that, whatever, seen that. And this is how we know what we know. This is how we know we know. We messed up in it. <laughs> but we see people sitting in their agony, not just month after month, but very often seeing decade, Years. decade after decade after decade, and they're still grieving that loved one. They're still grieving. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know personally that have lost children, Yes. whether through miscarriage or stillbirth, or um, crib, uh, shaken baby syndrome, crib death, uh, car accidents, work, it's crazy. It is unprecedented how many people I know and you know that they have lost children. Yes. Uh, and not just one children, but more than more one than You were one. telling a story yesterday yes. about a man. Tell, tell that story. That's uh, interesting. This friend of mine in North Carolina, he, he told us a story one time. He lost his 21-year-old son to a car accident, horrific, tragic accident took his life. The man still, of course, he grieved deeply, but he managed to hold on to his faith in God. Then many years, and that that death caused he and his wife to just grow apart. A tragedy can bring people sure. together, but it also can tear apart, which it often does. Anyway, that resulted in a divorce, and so not only did they lose a child, but they had to grieve the, the death of a marriage. They couldn't put it back together. So years later, he married another woman, and they had a child together. The child was about four years old, and they were at a wedding and a happy occasion. And in the reception area, they had this big table set up, and it looked like this big marble slab uh, sitting on this big round base. They just assumed it was fully attached. And the little children were running round and round and round, you know, as little children will. And the little four-year-old boy, his four-year-old son, as he was going around, he grabbed the edge of that table, and it slid off and crushed him in front of that entire wedding congregation. 
at Daddy sat there and watched his son be crushed. It breaks my heart to talk about it. He did his funeral. And when we asked, how could you do that? He said, because God's on his way to get me through any of this. And so some people are able to hold on to their faith, but that's not true of everybody. No, it's rarely true. And so we, we endeavor to try to teach you how to effectively walk your faith journey out in every circumstance. And we have been through all those circumstances. And um, we, we know what it is to grieve. I have a dear friend in um, another state, and she's a mighty woman of God. But she grieved her mother's death for 30 years. She was stuck. She, she couldn't throw away one thing that belonged to her mother. She ended up hoarding up the house because she couldn't turn loose of anything mm -hmm. <clears throat> because she was so involved in the grief of losing her mother for 30 years. That's and you know what started breaking it off of her? Her dear friend Sandy. I smacked her around a little bit, <laughs> not physically. Everybody else was going... Honey, I know it's hard, mm. honey, but you gotta let it go. And and sometimes we need that. That sometimes that's the appropriate thing to do. But thirty years of that, I walked up to her and said, Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. God is calling you to go and do what he's in time in, in um uh, I lost my word. Um, anointed you to do. Stop grieving. Your mother is in heaven. And didn't he instruct at one point, let the dead bury the dead? Let the dead yeah. bury the There's dead. There's stuff the living have to do. And yeah. so we can get stuck, beloved. And it's, it's I, we don't belittle that, but it's time. It's, it's like God told Samuel when King Saul, the kingdom was ripped from King Saul in the Old Testament. God told Samuel, because Samuel mourned King yes, Saul. He did. Deeply mourned him. And God said, Samuel... Fill up your horn with oil and move on. Was it the prophet Isaiah? He was not even allowed to go to his wife's funeral because God had apportioned him a time to do something. And God said, you let, you let the family bury your, your wife. You go on. And that's a hard... Ooh, that's hard. That's a hard hard thing for most people to swallow. Very hard. Um, because when we love someone, it's almost like, and you said this yesterday when we were ministering, um, that sometimes it's like we aren't good Christians or we aren't good family members if, if we, we don't, don't spend the rest of our lives falling apart, grieving, mourning, sobbing, wailing, that we're just not good mothers, fathers, parents, friends, yeah, Christians. And that's just a lie. And we are not meant to live in grief. We no. are supposed to grieve. And what does that look like? It doesn't. So some people swallow that grief and they just, I'm going forward. I'm going forward. And they never take time to process that. And then somewhere, that's not healthy. Years either. down the road, it's gonna back up on them. So that's not healthy either. No, I've saying, done that before. We've all done it. So it's not a matter of ignoring grief and it's not a matter of living in grief it is a place of going to the father and saying God you know that my heart is crushed at this loss that this is more than I can bear father show me how to bear up underneath this in your power I submit my will to you I don't understand it I don't know why listen I have so and I don't to... even like it I did... right we don't like it we don't understand it we don't want it that it's nothing that we would have asked for but Father, you allowed this to happen. Show me if there's something in me that I could have done differently. Great, let me amend that. Not and to be learn sitting, not to sit in shame, but yes, to learn. Or if it wasn't me, if there's nothing I could do, Father, give me that peace. Let me function in that peace so that I can cry, I can grieve, yes. I can take that time to set aside for grief. But then, Father, to pick me up and dust me off. And I think about David when Bathsheba's baby died. He and Bathsheba's first baby died because it was committed in adultery. And, and that baby suffered. That baby was sick. That baby cried. And David just wept and wailed. He would not eat. He, he would grieved. not make. He would not do anything. Oh, he was just on his face. God, heal my son. Heal my son. Heal my son. Heal my... And God allowed the baby to die. Yes. And at that, he picked himself up. He took a bath. He worshiped the Lord, and then he yes. went, and he ate, and he got up, and he moved on. And we need to understand that, but there was a process in that. There was process. He had to grieve. Grief but when the good. death came, that's when he said, okay, there's nothing more to pray. Yes. This thing is done. 
uh, you know, that, well, let me not get into that. I was going to say, you know, sometimes we think everybody should rise from the dead. We should lay hands on everybody because we have the power of God to lay hands on everybody. Rise up from that dead bed and walk. That's great, but we must seek Holy Spirit to know when that is necessary right. and when that is not necessary because we're all going to die at some point. And we That's need right. to have such keen discernment that we know when we are to lay hands on someone and when we are to just succumb to it and let God's will come about so that we can move forward. Because, listen, we're going to die. People are going to die. And there are times, and Sandy and I have been talking about this for months, really, that we live in such perilous times that there are people that in God's mercy he is removing them because they that. will not they will buckle under the pressure of what is coming. And so not all death is like, oh Satan took Satan cannot kill anybody. Satan cannot take a life. He, he might can take somebody who is not covered in the blood of Jesus Christ because they opened their life to him. But he really, he cannot even do that without that, God's permission. He However, God's a believer, permission. these people say, oh the devil took Sister Grace, and, and I said, listen, I, I, I'm just going to tell you, you know, can we open our lives up to things that the devil has a little more influence in? Absolutely, and that's the teaching for another time. But if I am a born-again, blood-bought believer of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit because he now lives in me, uh, and the devil has more power over me than God does, we're serving the wrong God. Yeah, i got a problem with that God. See, I don't believe that. You can't make me believe that. No, absolutely not. God is God, and God is supreme, and God knows exactly what we need. You know, I was talking about my mother-in-law this morning. She's 94, and uh, she's, she's just a spunky little thing, but she uh, has very advanced dementia. And I said, you know, she can't remember hardly anything. The only thing she remembers is my husband's name, her son, and, and that's starting to slip a little bit. And it's, it's just sad because she was a very active woman and very opinionated at that. And I said, you know, I, we don't understand why the Lord does not just take her. But God does all things well. Yes, He does. And God knows the beginning to the end. He knows what is needed, when it is needed, and how it is needed. We have to trust that mm -hmm. in life and in death. Yeah, and the whole thing about it's it's understanding God's sovereignty. That's it. Understanding and trusting that His will is better than our will. His ways are not our ways, which is why we must concede. We must consign ourselves to His will and say, God, I don't necessarily understand, but I trust you so implicitly. I really trust you. You know, one of the biggest problems of the body of Christ, and there are many, uh, one is we have no fear of the Lord, and two is we yeah. don't really trust Him. We trust that's Him when true. everything's going good, and that's not really trust because everything's good. <laughs> We say we trust, but trust, if you look that word up, it means to fully rely on. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm fully relying on Christ, then there leaves no question of His judgment. Correct. Or His way of doing things. That doesn't mean you don't hurt. That doesn't mean your memories are not there. That doesn't mean that you don't have a process of immediate grief. And then even sometimes later down the road, you know, there's times that my dad died, and then five months later, my only brother died. And there's little things that trigger a memory, a smell, a, 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 a situation. My brother and I got saved about the same time, so we really studied the Bible a lot together. And when I learned something new, I said, man, I wish he was here for I could tell and Then I remember, how stupid. He's with the source of revelation. Right, right. So we, we just really got to learn to to just let God do what only God can do in us, even in the hard places. It's seeking the joy of the Lord. It is. And finding that through our... Listen, it doesn't mean we never cry. It doesn't mean we're never sad. It doesn't mean that we don't have, like you said, we have triggers. And it could be 30 years later and something can trigger a memory about a lost loved one. That doesn't mean we didn't grieve. That just means, you know, we love them. Well, we must still miss them. But grief, when, when it's out of sync with God, is when we just go into our depths of despair. And listen, I, I'm going to tell you, the depths of despair is truly the absence of God. So if it we are is. in our depths of despair, it doesn't it mean you're not born again it doesn't mean you hadn't accepted Christ but you have you have darkened the door to his That's presence right. and so when we are in our depths of despair it is time to turn back to God and give that grief to God yes and I listen that sounds simple but it is the only way to explain it none of us would survive this listen in 2020 nothing to do with COVID absolutely nothing to do with my first my brother-in-law from my first marriage 
and he and I were very close. He went to the hospital. He thought he had um, a pulled muscle in his shoulder. He went. He was there ten days. Died. He had an aneurysm because they misdiagnosed it. Died. Forty nine years old. A month later, it was about six weeks later. My current brother in law, my uh, the, my marriage yes. now. Um, he went to the hospital. He thought he had a hernia. Died about two weeks later. It was right. I think it was right at two weeks later. Went to the hospital for a hernia and died. He was covered in cancer. Yes. Nobody knew. There was no. There was no real. Wow. I think you have cancer. Like there was no idea because right. he was a workaholic. He always worked. And so I lost two brothers-in-law within six weeks of one yes. another. I mean, you stand both forty-nine years old. Yes. That is a hard blow. It is hard. But God, in His not. To mention all the other people dying around them. Around that, I them love. that was a lot. We we lost a lot. It's, she and I combined, we lost crazy. so many people. That it was unreal. Yes. And how do we? How are we sustained in that? We must cling to the comforter. You know all this, and I know we say this all the time, but just attending church. It's not sufficient. Just doing good things is not sufficient Sufficient to sustain us no. when we are in crisis. We must truly connect with the vine because he is our life source. When we, I mean, you think about people who have tragic accidents and one person lived and everybody else in that car accident died or a boating accident or whatever. Why did I live? Why did they die? And we get into this thing where, listen, you and I have dealt with this with, with yeah. many people. Soldiers Why did I have live? So, yes. Soldiers and, have to deal with And that. this PTSD stuff and all you know why why did I live and so sometimes it's not just grieving their death it's grieving my life it's like why am I still alive why did I survive and XYZ did not you know and so that kind of thing is coming back to the sovereignty of yes. God that says it's okay to be sad it's okay to take six weeks I don't know a month I mean everyone's timing is different but that we don't remain there because then we become ineffective for the kingdom. Absolutely. So not only did they die, but our spiritual walk dies yes. with them because we grieve ourselves literally to death, whether it is spiritual or physical. You know, one of the Old Testament stories that most everybody knows, Moses, everybody kind of recognizes Moses, even if you're not an Old Testament student. And God buried Moses. Moses took the children of Israel so far out of the bondage of Egypt. And of course, then we know later Joshua took over that. But Moses died. And God buried Moses in a place where nobody knew. Now, why would God do that? Now, there are several deep teachings about that. But just on the surface, God knew that if he allowed the Israelites to bury him, they would stay and mourn and mourn and mourn, and they would not go on in. That's and interesting. I hadn't thought about that. That's interesting. He knew that they would not be able to, because they had a mourning period anyway. But God knew that the Israelites would not be able to go forward without their beloved leader, even though they fought him a lot. That Moses was their leader for sure. forty years, and so you know God knows what we need and when we need it. And I know our time is up, but you know we want to say this, and we might take it, we might take it up in another session. But right now, our world, the world, the planet we share with multiple multiples of different races of people, uh, is in crises. It's not just the United States. We are in crises, people, uh, in in most every avenue of our societies. Uh, but the whole world is. I have friends in India, and, and the pastor tells me it's, it's really bad. During the COVID, it was horrible. Uh, my friends in Kenya, many of them are going hungry because of the fallout from, from COVID has set them in such crisis. The whole world is in crisis. And this is the word the Lord gave me, and we'll wrap this up. The Lord told me several weeks ago, he said, my people, better get stable in their minds. Mm -hmm. We're so chaotic in our thinking now and everything's confusing and everything's kind of turned upside down. But the Lord said, my people better get stable in their minds mm -hmm. because this thing is not going to get better overnight. There's probably going to be some more difficult days ahead. We don't want to be gloomy and doomy here, but I really believe, and most other people do, that this thing is not going to be a short-lived thing, the difficulties we're seeing. So people, if I tell you anything, get your mind healthy. Get your mind stable. 
The Bible says, He has perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. If you've got to have peace in the middle of turmoil, and you better have, or you will, you'll just fall apart. Because when the worst stuff comes, you will not be. Yeah, I mean, as bad as it's been, there might be some worse coming. And so get your mind stable. Get it healthy. Stop pouring junk into your brain. Start pouring the love of Jesus into you so that you can stand. He said in Ephesians, having done all you know to do, then stand in the evil day. Amen. So we're going to be following up with other sessions to tell you how to stand in the evil day. Yes, yes, yes. All right, well, we have just a few minutes left. So if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis Wolf. That's me, Sandy Renner. That's her. We are here to bring the living word into everyday life, yes. practical application. We are both published authors, and so all of our books are found on Amazon.com. And through this coming year, we're going to be studying out of just a variety. So like last year, we went through... Um, Thy Kingdom Come, Kingdom versus Religious. So all of 2023 was based on, I'm sorry, 2022 was on the Kingdom of Heaven. And that was some good stuff. That was some good stuff. It yeah. would pay to go back and read, look yeah, at some absolutely. of those videos. Absolutely. I highly recommend it. Because if we don't understand Kingdom, uh, nothing, nothing else, else makes matters. sense. No, it does not at all. So Sandy actually had, now these are under Sandy Starnes, Starnes S T A R N E S, it's, uh, before she married, right? Um, but these are Finley the Fish books, and these are incredible little books for tweeners, but families that have enjoyed reading them together, books of faith, anything you want to and say purpose. about these? Like, um, it, it just really, in simplistic ways, show us how to have faith in God and how to find purpose, that we have purpose in this yes. earth. Yeah, and it's great because, listen, kids need this stuff. Yes, they do. We can't just assume that they go to church and Sunday school, they got it. <laughs> Yeah, believe me, it's got to be at home first. Yeah. Um, Sandy has her uh, autobiography called "Stories: A Woman's Journey of Becoming Imperfectly Perfect." It's a nice sized book. It is a hundred and twelve. You're right. Look at me, I got it right. She always says uh, hundred and ten because my other one has a hundred. Anyway, yeah. So a hundred and twelve short stories about Sandy and her journey with God, her journey with her family, her journey, journey with jobs and having no money and divorce and just the things that she's gone through and all that fun life all stuff. All the fun life <laughs> stuff that grows us if we choose to seek God's face, and that's what she chose. So this, please get this. If you want to grow in faith, this is a great, great, great book for that. Um, one Law is her newest book, came out, I don't know, the end of 2022, okay. like September, October. September. Um, oh. One Law, and we're going to get into this book. Yes. In this coming year, this is one of the ones we're going to, well, really stories as well, but we're going to get into this because she has some incredible stuff for the church, the body of Christ, mm. because we are hurting. The body of Christ is yes. fragmented in so many ways. And fragile. Fragile. That's what we're fragmenting. We're, we're fragile. fragmented and fragile. We're all the mess. <laughs> but this one law is an incredible book. She takes us all the way back to Genesis so that we can see what happened in the garden, figure out how we got into the mess we're in today, and what do we do to rectify the problem. Yes. So one law. Again, all these are, are available on Amazon.com. Um, we got the grief book, which we're going to talk about. I don't know. A little, we talked about it today. and. Um, I have my autobiography, Goucher's Got a Great Expectations. And again, with our autobiographies, we are going to take some time. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but we're going to take some time out. to just talk about some of our journey. Because, listen, I have stories. You have we stories. Have stories. <laughs> and so, all of them were not jesus -y. So the thing is, you know, we, we like to be candid because we want you to go, we want you to look at us and not go, oh, gosh, well, they're just preachers, so what do they know? We... We live life. We have lived some crazy <laughs> life. I mean, my gosh. So we, we want to share how did we come out of our darkness yes. and how did we get into the light of Christ. And how we stay there because, you know, it's kind of like losing weight. You might can get on a really good diet and lose some weight, but keeping that excess yeah. weight off. So it's the same thing with, with the traits of the world. Mm -hmm. We can get out of the world, but man, the world keeps trying to hold on to it. That's so. correct. It tries to, what did they say just when I got out? They dragged me back. Drag yes. you right back. <laughs> in the darkness, those claws in the darkness. And sometimes me. I kind of went with them because it felt good. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Oh, right mercy. Here. Yeah, and I have one called Out of Obscurity, Helping Women Find Their Kingdom, Power, and Purpose. Great um, book. I, I, this is one of my favorites. It took me 10 years to write this because I had to do a lot of research. And, and, this makes the women of the Bible, I don't like to tell just a stale version of, repeat the Bible. I get into, like, what were they thinking? Yeah. What was going I on? Mean, you think about 
what was her name? JL that Oh, Deborah the, and JL, yeah. Put the uh, nail the in the man's pack. head. She took the tent uh, pack. Yeah, she gave him a glass of warm milk to help him sleep. Sweet little thing that she was. And then drove a nail in his temple. Yep. And I'm going, you go, girl. And there's something really <laughs> profound in understanding. <laughs> what how was we, she thinking? But, what was her process? But how do we approach an enemy? Like, we just want to go, Rawr! Yeah. But, man, uh, there's, there's a lot of ways. him to sleep. To, yeah, man. Forever. So anyway, we I, I, have, I have more books. We have a, a Nation's Achilles here. We're going to get into this because yes. we will this address is a great book. sexual immorality and how it is destroying our nations. Not this oh. nation, all nations. All nations. Um, <laughs> how do I forgive um, the beauty of discipline? We can have a couple oh, sessions. Oh, we're going to have to do a couple sessions of discipline. I actually wrote... People just don't understand how to... Discipline their children. Cause their children to be nice people. Here, you know, I'm just going to say this real quick and we have to close, but not disciplining your children is a detriment to the very children that you love so much and you're afraid to hurt their parents. And the society and because they grow up to be little hellions. terrors. Yep. All right, listen, we are Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible, Alexis, Sandy. We are here every Sunday morning at 8 a.m., but, of course, everything's on YouTube and Facebook. So if you miss a, a segment, just pop on YouTube and type in Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible. We'll pop right up. It's a, a blue logo or aqua, turquoise or whatever that is. Anyway, you guys be blessed. We'll see you back next week. Shalom.